down by the record machine I knew he must have been about 17 He was going strong Playing my favorite song And I could tell it would be long. Hey guys, I'm Sean Hammond with PremierGuitar.com We're in Cedar Rapids at the U.S. Cellular Center talking to Zach He's tech with Joan Jett and her whole band. Zach, you've got all, are these all Joan's guitars? Just all, first, these are hers? First three are Joan's guitars. Uh, this is the number one. She'll play this for most of the set. Uh, Gibson Melody Maker, uh, the original Melody Maker that she had out on the road and you know recorded all the songs with um, is and her place and she probably has had this guitar since about the mid 90s was when this one came out on the road um it's got this a red road yeah red roads velvet hammer just a kill switch and that's pretty much it it's a really light guitar that's why she likes them she can move around just kind of do her thing and did she really just spray paint it um yeah it's just like a white you can see where the her belt buckles really rolled away and Man, just, look at that uh, neck you know too just where her you know, wrist, you know, kind of wears it away, but yeah, it's been, it's been used and that's abused, crazy. you know, that's the way she likes them. But she's been playing Melody Makers since she's been in the Runaways, so yeah. she is... Now, what's, what's with the, um, I've never seen, is that like Velcro is on the Velcro? volume knob? Yeah, yeah, just around a speed knob, and uh, she just likes that for a little more grip, you know, yeah. she's got to get to it quick, and, you know, kind of slams it down. Never seen that before. Yeah. Does she like the the action pretty low? She's or? real low. Yeah, she likes low action. She's I right a little about the rattle point, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, what know. gauge of strings does she prefer? Uh, both her and Doug are Diodario tens, okay. ten to forty six. So, and this guitar here is we're pretty excited about this. This is a new prototype that Gibson uh, is making for her. I'm not sure when it's going to come out, but. She played it for the first time last night in Bloomington for a couple songs, and uh, it's a little heavier guitar. This one's made out of maple. Um, it's a, I think it's a Burst Bucker three pickup, the Zebra Cobalt, and that one. But again, same thing, just a kill switch. I put the Velcro on, you know, and a little bit of a heavier guitar. What did they call that finish? It's. It, I don't know what they call this interesting. one. Yeah. I'm not sure what they call that. It looks like a red wood burst or something, you know? But she's talking about maybe putting like some red hard inlays or maybe black hard inlays, you know, where the dots are. So that'd be really cool. Do you know if they like borrowed any of her older guitars to, to match the specs or Yeah, anything? they took the specs um, off her original Melody Maker. And even so, this was the first... Um, this one came out like 2011, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the second run of a signature. So she's got three signature guitars through Gibson. The first one was in white, this one is in black. Uh, they're no longer available, I believe. So this is the next one that's gonna be coming out. But again, you can see too where the belt buckle's rubbed away in the same spot. And These are on mahogany. Yeah, like yeah, like and just where her you know, yeah. arm runs away, so. She's real, con real consistent in what she plays. And this pickup here is um, also another uh, Red Roads Velvet Hammer that was given to me by uh, Brian Farmer, rest in peace, and uh, Warren Haynes. He kept saying, uh, I know Warren's got one somewhere, and I'm going to bring it, I'm going to bring it. And I don't know, two years later, he finally showed up with it when he probably cleaned his room or something and found <laughs> under the bed. How so. would you describe the sound of this? I mean, we know the sound of Joan Jett, but... I know, there aren't a lot of those pickups around. What would you compare them to? Um, I don't know what I'd compare them to. It's just it. It's Pretty high output. Yeah, yeah, very good, good gain. Again, she likes that kind of, you know, not really distortion, but a good gain. You know, yeah. a good, uh, you know, dirty sound. Now what about these other two over here? It looks these like you got an Epiphone on yeah, the. These two are Dougie's lead guitar okay. player, Dougie Needles. This is his number one. He'll play this for the whole show. Unless he breaks a string or something, we'll go to number two. But uh, I think it's a 58 Junior. I think it's the first year they started making the double cutaways on them. P90 pickup, so it, it gets kind of loud on stage sometimes. We got a noise suppressor yeah. up there to kind of tone it down, but 
And check out and the, got some the cover. It. It's just, yeah. man, there's grooves in there and yeah, probably a couple pounds worth of stickers, huh? This thing's broken a few times, I think, and taken some hits, but that's the way they like it and beat up, you know? And then they did the Golden Gods for Joan last year, and uh, they gave him this uh, Epiphone. I think it's a 61 SG with that, with that TV uh, finish, uh, you know? Yeah, I like to call it the TV Needles guitar, but uh, there's another P90s in them, so he doesn't so he's, play. He's just one. got two guitars, huh? And he pretty that's much it. plays the that, the. That's it. Two. I got a I got a third one on the bus, but it stays on the bus. He likes to mess around every once in a while. But yeah, again, like they're all just real plug and play. One guitar. There's everything's in standard tuning. Mm -hmm. um, how the bass player's got a hip shot. That he'll drop down to D for uh, "Love Is Pain." Mm -hmm. uh, that's the mm -hmm. only song, so. It looks like um, Dougie's got locking tuners on yeah, his junior. Yeah, I think these are, uh, I think they're Spurzels that we put on there. All right. I can't even really know. These are the Grovers. Grover. I got other Spurzels in there. I tried to put some on Jones ones. She didn't really like them. They're kind of a little heavy on the top, so. But and the other thing, a lot of, you know, Jones sound, too, comes from, you know, the picks that she uses. She uses those kind of shark fin, mm -hmm. you know, things and... Which side does she use? She'll play them like this, and she really gets that, like, uh... The raspy sound? Yeah, and a lot of it even more like her upstroke, so she kind of gets that really, like... The ups are kind of, she's really kind of digging in, so it even gives more of that really dirtiness to her already dirty sound. So she really get those grooves and... Does she break strings very often? Man, knock on wood everywhere. <laughs> Neither people break a lot of really? strings. She yeah, those different picks look yeah. like they could definitely cause some... She doesn't like new strings either. She'll leave them on until they're dead or it's like, Joan, these don't tune up anymore. We need to, you know, put some new ones on. So she really just, you know, likes to work out the guitar a lot. What other... Uh particulars does she request? I mean, she's pretty bare bones and straight ahead, but are there any other special instructions she gives you for setting up her guitars or for running things? It's really, I'm just, I'm always watching her. You know, if if she wants something, she'll be really quick. She'll kind of give me one look, and if I'm not looking, you know, I miss it. So I'm pretty good at just always keeping an eye on her. And she just likes Kleenex, um, you know, some smart water and Gatorade's Pedialyte stuff. Really simple, you know. Everyone's really, really simple, easy to work for, and we just go out every night and do it, you know. Now, before we go up to check out the amps and what few pedals there are, does does she use wireless or just go straight into the amps? No, everybody's cables, uh, no wireless. She's not a big wireless fan, so okay. kind of that New York punk club thing you know we're just yeah 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 and we sit up really tight on the stage too every night i mean i know we're in a big arena but if you know there wasn't heart behind us we would be just as tight so she's right really up on the a big yeah. fan of being right up on her amp and the band close to her and she's been that way since i've started so all right zach so we're on stage here you got, you got all these texts around yeah. you guys are doing getting ready for the show this is joan's main amp for like how long she's been using this she's recorded through this uh it's a music man uh hd 130 and um this is like she's the original one back from the 80s she's or late 70s on, she's recorded everything on the sample i love rock and roll uh hate myself um this is it's been her number one amp Every time we do tours or anything like that, this comes out on the road. I have a backup for this amp, uh, 130 watts. She likes uh, JJ tubes in them. And they, now these just have a tube preamp and a solid state power yeah. amp, right? Yeah. And then we have the, um, you know, we made a uh, just just a head version to when we do flight aids and one offs and things like that. That we'll just fly this in a case and. Uh, you know, we'll rent like a Vox AC30 and she likes those uh, blue Celestians in there and we find that kind of gets close to uh, the main one. The main one, we stripped out the, the speakers that came in them and they're uh, EV speakers. So okay. just a lot more powerful, you know, just heavy, really just that good mid-range that she likes and uh, it's really heavy too. I carried up four flights of stairs to uh, have our amp guy, uh, Harry Cole, to take a look at it. No, these, uh, they've got two channels. Right? She must be going in the first channel because yeah. that's on 10 and the other one's on yeah, 2. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she runs right through here. Um, 
it basically she just goes right into a tuner and then it comes back out into this Ibanez tube screamer. That's it, huh? And right into the amp. A lot of, really all the Blackheart sound just comes from their hand. They're very plug and play and it's just straight up rock and roll. They don't like a lot of effects and kind of what you see is what you get and, and that's the way Joan likes it. She likes the TS9 Turbo, huh? It's a turbo, yeah, yeah. How long have you been working with Joan? I've been with Joan since 2007. And has it been pretty much the same? She's really a creature of habit. Um, the backup amp for the longest time used to be a, uh, it was a Mesa Boogie Mark III. Mm -hmm. uh, that thing just got destroyed on flight eights and we used to show up and people would actually have screws ready to help us put it back together because the airlines would just toss it and stuff. So you, they retired that to the uh, recording farm so we don't take that out anymore. Now, do you think the main thing she likes about the Music Man amps is that they're sturdy because they have fewer tubes or be just the sound, sound or just all of it? That kind of mid, you know, mid gain uh, that she really likes. Doesn't like a lot of bass, you know, a little bit of that high end, but, you know, really her sound, you know, mixed with Dougie's sound really just has a nice, you know, wash of guitars. It blends really nice together. Are you in charge of the gum and the cough drops definitely, too? Definitely, definitely. That's a very important part of the... What are those, Ludens or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, uh, uh, oh, they're I don't know my cough drops, man. Yeah. And she likes his fingeries. She'll use this all over the guitar, spray it out of the back of the neck and the fingerboard. She goes through a lot of this that's stuff. The that's the first I've seen it Velcro to an amp. That's, that's pretty right. awesome. That's right. Well, we're high tech around here, you know. Okay, Zach, so this is, these are Dougie's amps. Does he use both these JCM 900s at the same time? Yeah, or? It's just, this is the live head. We're just running them through both cabinets. This is just a backup in case this one goes down. And again, a lot of it's just from, you know, the amp and the guitar and Dougie. Um, his effects are very, very minimal. There's the board up front here. It's just, uh, you can see it's really only the, the wah pedal and the delay and the trim low and the flanger. And he really only uses them... I mean, very sporadic. I think the wah he uses for a couple of the new tunes in a solo. Um, that digital delay, I don't even think he's touching it right now. The tremolo he uses for Crimson and Clover. And that flanger, they are doing this song called Little Liar a little while ago, so that had kind of a nice little chorusy flangey effect that he likes. But again, a lot of it's just plug and play rock and roll with these guys. So he's just getting all his dirt from the Marshalls. Mm -hmm. Does he use the reverb in those at all? No. No, no, no. Well, yeah, if, if he's going to do anything, we'll dial up a little flange or maybe just the tiniest bit of reverb, but he really doesn't like any of that. What's the side boxer That's done with here? Switcher. This is a switcher from the Clean of the Distortion okay. on the back. So, kind of a little homemade pedal board that uh, I sort of stole a design from uh, this guy named Matt Brown. He designed a great pedal board, but for the tour, it was a little too much, and I th just thought some of the is going to get torn apart, so I kind of scaled it back, made it a little easier. What's this power supply? I've never seen that. Um, that's a G Lab, just uh, just a power block. It's running all the power up front, and we get the same one back here for the uh, just the TU2 pedal. And Dougie's using a P90 pickup that sometimes in these things can get really hummy, and so we'll dial up this. I like to call it the shut up pedal. Um, noise suppressor, yeah, a boss noise suppressor. Just kind of dial it back, and you know. Mm, it's a P9, you're going to get that noise out of it, but, you know, I really haven't had to use it a whole lot for these first couple shows, so, fingers crossed. Nice. Yeah. Zach, this is Hal's bass rig on stage. He's got, what, are these, like, 70s old, SVTs? Yeah, just old Ampegs. These have actually been the Blackheart Locker. They probably haven't seen the day, light of day since 2007. And, uh, again, we had our amp guys, Eric Bradley and Harry Colby, take a look through them. And I re x them all. They were all ripped apart and looked really bad. And so we put a lot of time into them and uh, just right into the amp. That's, you, that's it. Does uh, he run one head and one cabin? That whole rig is just yeah. an entire backup rig? Yeah. So this is the live head today. Usually it's this one, but this one's sounding a little funny. So I'm going to start here. The one standing up is the live cab. So this is just kind of a backup. It makes for a nice table too, you know, so expensive table. Um, I met, does he dial it in pretty gritty or? No, Hal actually plays with his fingers. Mm -hmm. um, so you kind of get a lot of that, you know, little s sort of slappy, you know, thing about it. But um, it's, it's a great little sound, I think, um, you know, for blending in with the band. Uh, our other guys, you know, were more pick players and, you know, the fingers are sort of definitely a different sound, you know, but. It cool. seems to work. Now, is this his main bass right here? This, uh, this is his backup bass. Uh, just 
he, uh, Hal plays Fender Precision Bases, all stock. Uh, yeah, his number one. He's warming up right now with it. So okay. that's number two, with old Johnny Cash. That's right. Is that a pierced belly button sticker? I don't know. Is it? <laughs> Maybe it's a nipple. Let's hope, yeah, right? I don't know what that is. We might have to censor That's that. It. Well, thanks for taking the time to talk to us, Zach. Thanks, man. I enjoy you guys magazine yeah. a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Sean Hammond for PremierGuitar.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to sign up for PG Perks, your all-access pass to exclusive gear giveaways and discounts on PremierGuitar.com.